Okay, sorry about the delay. Um, okay, so I went ahead and placed the image. Um, if I want to resize it, um, I need to use the free transform tool, which I have selected here in the toolbox. Um, it's the keyboard shortcut is E uh, to access it. Um, it's also right below the scissors. It's about halfway, three quarters of the way down on the, the keyboard. I mean, on the, the um, toolbox. Okay, so if you want to resize something, you select the free transform tool, hold down your shift key and resize it. The reason why you want to use the, the uh, shift key when you resize something is that you don't want to distort it. And this is especially true when you're placing an image of a person. Uh, you don't want to distort their face. Obviously, nobody wants their face distorted when they're uh, with a picture of themselves, uh, especially when it's like a model or something, you don't wanna distort anybody's photo. Um, so you wanna hold down the shift key when you're resizing an image um, so that it will constrain the proportions of the, um, the original image, okay? So the free transform tool allows you to resize, resize an, uh, an image or a logo or something, any graphic element that you put on the page, okay? So that's the difference between resizing the frame. So right now I'm resizing the frame and using the free transform tool, you can then resize the, the actual image itself. So it'll resize the image and the frame together with using the free transform tool. Um, you can also resize stuff over here on the uh, properties panel. You'll see the 100% here. Uh, so you can do, you know, 50%, it'll resize at 50%. Um, or you can type in a percentage there uh, in each of those fields. Okay, so that's the difference between using the selection tool to resize the frame and then the free transform tool to resize the image. Uh, and the frame, okay, to make the image smaller. Um, so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to add some text to this document. So I'm gonna take my type tool and I'm gonna click and drag and make a, type, a text frame. So I usually make them a little bit larger than I think I'm gonna need. Um, one, I don't know how big I'm gonna make the text once I've typed it in there or added the text in there. So I wanna go ahead and make sure that my text frame is large enough to begin with. So I don't have to stop midway and resize my frame. Um, I can always go back in and resize the frame, the text frame, uh, once I've typed the text and moved it where I want to. But at this point, I wanna make sure that I have enough room uh, on my, with my text frame to be able to um, get all my text in there. Okay, and you can make as many text frames as you want. Um, obviously, if there's a large block of text, you're gonna make one text, text box and then have it flow from page to page. But if it's just uh, one line of text, you know, a couple words, then you can do a text frame for each of them. But large blocks of text, you will do, you know, a larger frame. Um, and fill that frame with all that text. And then there is ability uh, is a option that you will flow text from one page to the next if you had a multi-page document, okay? So I have my typed, my text frame here. I'm gonna switch over to Canvas and I'm going to remember I'm doing the pizza place. So I'm looking at this ad here, trying to figure out what, uh, additional information that I want to add into that uh, design over there. So um, again, remember I said you want to focus on what's the most important part of this image or this ad, I should say. Um, is it that they deliver? Is it their phone number? Is it their address? Um, is it the type of food that they make? Is it the hours? So um, kind of going along with the way things have changed in the last couple of years, the last two years or so, um, people are doing more deliveries, um, home deliveries of food, as opposed to going into the actual restaurant. 
So I'm going to focus on um, mobile kitchen for fast, hot deliveries. So that's the first text that I'm going to that I'm going to type in there. So mobile kitchen or fast, hot deliveries. I didn't spell that right. Deliveries. Oh, that's still on. <laughs> Deliveries. There we go. Okay, so once I have the type, the text typed in there, I'm going to highlight it. So I'm going to drag from the left or the right uh, with the little cursor. Okay. And then I'm going to come over here to my character panel. And I'm going to go through my fonts to see what kind, which font I would like to use for this. So, um, and I'm looking for one that has a lot of styles to it. So I'm going to only use one font, but I'm, then I'm going to alternate or experiment a little bit with all the different um, styles that are associated with that particular font. So remember what I said. Um, the font name, when there's a name, uh, a number in parentheses, that means that there's an addition, there's additional styles for that particular font. So it could be bold, italic, it could be extended, it could be condensed, it could be thin, light, and so forth. So I'm going to go ahead and select Poppins, because there's a lot of different styles associated with that particular font. And I want this text to stand out. So I'm going to use a bold font. And this is the styles here. So this pop down menu here. And then this right here is your size, where you're going to change the size of your text. So you do have some uh, numbers, default font sizes here. Um, but you can type in whatever number you want right here in this field. So I'm going to go ahead and go up to 24. Okay, so that's a little too big. It won't fit all the way across uh, one line. So I'm going to go ahead and push this down arrow until the word, word deliveries comes back onto that first line or onto all one line. Okay, and then the other thing is the, the, the proper way to center text is to use the center alignment. Uh, option here on the paragraph. A lot of times uh, people will use the space bar to center things. Um, and that is not the true way to center an, a line of text in uh, InDesign or any program for that matter. Um, because you can press the space bar and make it look like it's centered, but it's truly not centered because if you change the font size, the font, uh, any the options with the font, it's no longer centered. It's going to look off all the time. And by using the center align option here in InDesign, that will center the text based on your text frame. So however wide your text frame is, it's going to calculate based on the font, the size, the style, and the uh, width of the text frame, and it will uh, center it accordingly. And so if I was to now change, say change this text to, um, instead of bold, extra bold, you can see it pushed it out just a little bit, but it's still centered within that text frame. It's not, um, push to one side or the other. It's, it's centered directly in that, the middle of that text frame. Okay, so that's one thing. Make sure you're always using the center uh, option on your paragraph right here, the second button. That way you get a true centered, your text is truly centered and not, um, you know, you don't have to worry about moving, uh, removing a space um, if you use the space bar. Okay, the other thing, I wanna make this text red. So I'm gonna highlight it again. So I just double click inside the text anywhere. I'm gonna click on the fill option here in my appearance. 
And again, this is the same in Illustrator uh, where you change your fill and your stroke. Um, Photoshop is a little bit different, but this is almost the same as in Illustrator. So I'm gonna click on that black square or the black T and I'm gonna make this red. So again, I can use my default swatches here, which are um, cyan, magenta, yellow, red, green, and blue. If you wanna use any of those, or you can come over here to your color, the little color palette, click on those three little lines there and go to CMYK. And then that gives you the spectrum of colors. So you can uh, select any, any of the, um, you know, any color that you want at that point, just by clicking here in the, in the spectrum. So I want a red. So I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna click on that. Now, again, because it's highlighted, you can't really see the color um, because it's highlighted. So if I go over here to the selection tool and click, then you can see the, um, what color it is. Um, if you don't wanna highlight the text, you can always come here to your fill, your fill and your appearance change this to text. So where it says apply to, change that to text and then go to the color panel again. And then you can click around until you find a color that you like. Okay, so that's kind of orange. I want it to be a little bit more um, red. It's still kind of orange. So you can just kind of click around until you find a color that you like. Uh, I think I'm gonna use that one. <clears throat> okay, then the other text that I need to put in here is, I'm gonna put the logo in. So I'm gonna add in the logo. So I'm gonna to go to file place. The logo is the Illustrator document. You do not have to um, convert that in Photoshop, just leave that as is. The only thing you're converting in Photoshop to CMYK are the images. So image one through five or image seven, how many ever images there were in the beauty school. Okay, so I'm gonna op uh, click open on the logo. And again, I'm gonna tell InDesign how big I want this logo to be. So I'm gonna click and drag with my mouse and place it in there. Now it's kind of big. I don't want it that big. So I'm gonna go ahead and go over here to the free transform tool. So E on the keyboard. And then I'm gonna hold down my shift key and I'm gonna resize it. So I want, I want the name of the business to be, to be you know, visible, but um, I also want the pizzas to stand out and then the mobile kitchen for fast hot deliveries. Because again, like I said, no, a lot of people right now are still doing at home deliveries. They don't not necessarily feel safe yet going into restaurants. So they'd rather still have the option to do, to do deliveries. And then this, this particular pizza restaurant is giving that option to, you know, people that want something delivered can still have it delivered. Okay. Um, then the next thing I want to put in there is um, what, where the, the area that they're serving. So it says serving westerly and surrounding communities. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my type tool or select my type tool. I'm going to click and drag and make another text frame. And then I'm going to type serving serving Wester, Wester, Lee, and surrounding communities. That way people know in that area how far their, um, how far their delivery um, area is. So again, I'm gonna go and change my font to the same one. So I'm making sure that I'm using the same font. So I'm going to 
go to, should be up here at the top. So the top section of your fonts option here is where the last font that you used. So it should come up there. Um, I'm gonna make that um, bold and I'm gonna make it just a little bit bigger so it fits in that text frame. And then I'm gonna click on the align center option again, cause I want this centered correctly, not by placing the, not by pressing the space bar, but by telling InDesign that I want this centered based on the text frame that I have and the size of the text. Okay, and then I'm switching over to my arrow tool, my selection tool to resize that frame. And I did the same thing with that one. And then let's see what else is in here. Um, what kind of food they have. So let's do another text frame. And we're gonna do pizza, heroes, and dinners. And that's not spelled right either, so heroes. Okay, so in this particular ad, they have stars separating the uh, items. I'm gonna do a, um, a slash here on the keyboard. So it's above the return key. So if you held down your shift key uh, and press that key, it will give you a slash or not a slash, but a line. Um, and then I'm gonna highlight this text. And again, you can you can type it out however you want. You can do you know a, a list, a return list, or you can do a long list, however you want to type the text out. Uh, and then I'm gonna go up here and select Poppins, which is the font that I'm using. And I'm gonna use semi-bold and I'm gonna increase it a little bit and then center that. Um, I think I'm gonna move this down here, move this up here, this here, okay. And then the next thing I'm gonna type in there is the phone number. So get another, create another text frame, 761-1607, okay, highlight that. Get the same font, so Poppins. This time I'm gonna make it black, the style black. And then I'm gonna make this fairly large. Again, you want, because people are trying to, are more likely to do a delivery, you need to find the phone number to um, call them. I'm also gonna add in a website, uh, even because at that time when this restaurant was first around, websites weren't available, weren't, weren't being made. So you wanna see, make sure that if somebody wants to, um, be able to order on online, you have that option too. Cause remember you're making this an updated version of, uh, of an ad. So I'm gonna make this a little bit smaller, um, center that. And then I'm gonna click behind the seven, press my return key and I'm gonna make up a website because obviously there is no website. So angelospizza.com. Okay, now I need to, I'm gonna go ahead and resize the frame, the text frame. See this little black, uh, red square plus sign? That means that there's more text inside this frame than that, than which fits. So I'm just resizing the frame. And then I wanna make that text smaller so it fits within the uh, width of the, the the page. So I'm going to click in here. I'm going to double click on that. 
just so it highlights that, or I can come behind the M and drag to the right or left, uh, depending on where you start. And I'm gonna make that 24 point right now. And then I'm gonna use the direct selection tool or the selection tool, excuse me, the selection tool to resize the frame. So I'm gonna click on this edge here and I'm gonna drag it to the left so that it stays within the page. And then I'm gonna make this just a little bit bigger. So I'm gonna use my arrow keys. And then I'm gonna change the fill on that to red from the, the swatches. Okay. So I'm gonna bring that down there close to the phone number and the address. And then um, I think I'll make the, this just a little bit bigger. So I'm gonna click all in there or I can do command or control A on the keyboard and um, command or control A on the keyboard and that will select everything. And then I'm just gonna click my arrow Make it just a little bit bigger. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and then just move that down just a little bit. So I'm using my arrow keys to move things up and down. Uh, click on that, move it down a little bit. Click on that. Move that down just a little bit. And then may look one more time at the original one and see if there's anything um, maybe I'll put open Tuesday through Sunday because it says they're closed Monday. So that there, take my type tool, click and make another text frame and do open Tuesday with a dash uh, Sunday and then oops, noon, what's the hours? Eleven a.m. So let's just condense it. So eleven a.m. to midnight. Highlight that, so Command or Control A, change it to font, make it medium, center it, um, and then go back to my selection tool and resize the frame. And the only reason I'm resizing the frame is a lot of times when the frames are overlapping, the text frames are overlapping, it's hard to select something, whether it be with the, the selection tool or the type tool to change it. Uh, it's best that they, the type, the text frames don't overlap, okay? Um, so you can go ahead and make them smaller. If they're really long, the text frames are really long, you can go ahead and resize those um, and make them smaller. Um, and then um, if you are making multiple text frames, you don't have to worry about them overlapping um, and being able to select things um, that you need. Okay, so if I press my W key, you can uh, go into presentation mode and then you can see what the, the ad looks like with just the, um, the text and the images, no margins, no column guides, nothing. It just shows you exactly what the ad looks like um, as, as it's intended um, without the, the margins and so forth, okay? Um, the other thing is um, if you wanted to make a background, so fill the background with a color instead of having it white. So instead of having it like white of paper, if you wanna make a shape for your background, 
um, you're going to go to the rectangle tool. So I think I'm going to, I'm not going to make it across the whole thing. I think I'm just going to make it here in the middle. So I'm going to click and drag with my rectangle tool around the area that I want it to be. Okay. Around where the box I want it to be. And then I'm going to go to my fill here. It's going to say frame. You want it to say frame because you're making the box filled with color. Uh, and they think I'm going to do green, but I'm going to change the tint of it here a little bit. So I'm going to click on that where it says tint 100% and I'm going to drag it down a little bit so it's a lighter shade of gray. And then let go. About where I, the percentage where I want it. And then because I drew this rectangle last, it's covering up the text. So I need to move it behind the text. So with it still selected, I'm gonna go up to the object menu, arrange, and then send to back the very last one on the, on the list. And that's gonna push it behind the text and the logo. And I'm gonna resize it just a little bit so that all of the logo and everything is in there. The other thing is I don't want that black line, the black stroke around it. So I'm gonna come over here with the, the square or rectangle still selected, click on where it says stroke right here, and then click on the universal symbol for no, so none. And when I do that, it turns off that stroke. So now I just have the green box. Okay, so that that option is is there that rectangle is optional. It's not you don't have to do that. All I'm looking for is that you get an image on the page, the logo on the page somewhere, place the images somewhere on the page, at least one. And then that should be it, you know, as those are the requirements. So, so some of the text, it doesn't have to be all of the text. Um, not all of the text has to be on there. Uh, just what you feel is the most important text. Um, so in this case with mine, I did the, the you know, deliveries, the logo, uh, the phone number, and the website address, which I made up. And then of course the hours that they're open um, and then what they serve, okay? So it doesn't have to contain all of that information on the original ads. Uh, if you want to include all of it in somehow, that's fine. Um, but you know, you don't want the ad to be cluttered. You want it to be um, everything to have its place and to be able to, you know, whoever looks at it, to be able to read it and find all the information that they're looking for um, at the, while they're looking at it. Okay, um, so then once you're done with the image, I mean the, the page, you're going to save it as your last name. So save as, and it's gonna be your last name, uh, yellow page, and you're gonna make sure that you're saving it into the folder where the images are. So the pizza, the pizza folder or the beauty, the beauty school folder, whichever one you choose to work on, make sure that your InDesign document is saved there um, as well. Okay, so I named it, I'm in the pizza restaurant. I'm gonna click save. And then the last thing uh, you need to do is export it as a PDF. So you're gonna go under the file menu, export. And it's gonna pick up the name of what you saved it as from the InDesign document. You're gonna make sure that the format right here says Adobe PDF print. And then you're gonna click save. And up here at the top where it says Adobe PDF preset, you're gonna change that to high quality print. 
and then click export. And those instructions are over here in Canvas. Um, export the file as a PDF, go to file export, change the format to Adobe PDF print. In the export PDF prop dialog box, select high quality print from the Adobe PDF preset drop down menu, then click export. So you're going to upload the PDF as well as the InDesign document that you just saved. Okay, so this document you're going to upload and the PDF uh, that I just exported, you're going to um, upload that as well. Okay, um, so this concludes the lecture for this assignment. Uh, review the InDesign videos um, that I posted in the InDesign introduction. Um, review the first two lecture videos that I posted as well. And then if you have any questions or concerns, please don't hesitate to email me. I will get back to you as soon as possible. Um, so this is the new, um, the new module for InDesign. Um, we'll be working on it again. Like I said, we only have two more weeks of school after, you know, well, no, th yeah, three weeks total. Yeah, three weeks total of school and then we'll be done. So we're gonna have one more InDesign assignment next week. And then um, we're gonna finish up with the um, final exam, which is comprehensive of everything that we've done so far in this semester, okay? And you'll have the whole week to do the final exam. All right, so again, any questions or concerns, don't hesitate to email me uh, either through Gmail or through Canvas. Um, and I will get back to you as soon as possible, okay? And have, hope you guys have a, a good weekend and happy Easter to everyone.